Thank you. Uh, Senator Hyde-Smith. Thank you so much, and thank you all for being here today. It's tremendously important, and it's very insightful. <clears throat> and I, uh, I certainly have faith that we're going to get in a better position soon. The uh, University of Mississippi's Medical Center is in my office right now. I just met with them and had to run out to come back so I could get these questions in, but they're our only academic medical center, and they're currently working toward achieving the National Cancer Institute designation, working on that really hard. But to date, there's been no NCI-designated centers in Mississippi, Louisiana, or Arkansas. So this situation requires uh, Mississippians to travel distances for advanced cancer care. Earning NCI status requires significant research, and we know that's important, and there's a reason for that in critical areas such as cancer biology, uh, immunology, and genetics. So I'm going to ask Dr. Sleckman, as a researcher at an NCI-designated center, how could cancer research funding cuts affect institutions like UMMC in their efforts to achieve this status, and how can we improve this? Uh, thank you for that question, Senator. And as your neighbor, uh, I understand the uh, cancer burdens uh, that, that your state experiences ver very, very well. Uh, I suspect that as they start to uh, make cuts like this, they will look at programs, uh, these larger programs, uh, to absorb some of those cuts. And so, although I don't have a crystal ball, I would imagine that the rate of new cancer center uh, designations, which over the last five years has been about one or so per year, uh, will lessen. Uh, and there are many cancer centers, including uh, the one in your own state, that are kind of in a holding pattern, uh, you know, waiting for the control tower to let them know that it's time to land. And those uh, will have to stay holding for a longer period of time. And also at UMMC, you know, we do the longstanding research studies. The one, the Jackson Heart Study, you're familiar with that? which studies the cardiovascular health and other things that uh, address risk factors for preventions of dementia, which has been discussed earlier. Both of these studies have been funded by NIH for over 25 years, and understanding these complex conditions and how to address this best, it's uh, not a fast process and requires years of study and investment. And uh, Dr. Parikh, can you speak to that, please? Can. I had the uh, real privilege of visiting Jackson when the study was starting, and, uh, and I've seen it grow, and I've seen it actually re uh, produce results. To follow those populations for 25 years and to follow them for the next 25 years is how we're going to ensure that the access and the treatments and the cures that are available in Jackson are also available in the Delta. And that's the only way that's going to happen. And, uh, and so if the Jackson Heart Study and others feel at risk, which surprisingly they do, I'm always surprised by that, but they feel at risk right now, as, uh, as do many other studies across the country. We've got to be able to put forth a vision that says, this is actually what we're going to do. This is a priority. And thank you for, uh, for showing it as a priority for the committee. Well, thank you for what you've done in Mississippi. And Dr. Holler. In your testimony, you highlighted the NIH Institutional Development Award, or the IDEA program, and recommended NIH expand the program. The IDEA program has had a profound impact in my home state of Mississippi, and it has helped correct the historic imbalance in federal research funding, which has been concentrated at a small number of legacy institutions. IDEA has helped unlock innovations at schools across my state where the cutting edge research is being conducted. And I'm currently working on protecting and continuing this program with my IDEA Reauthorization Act. But how does has IDEA research funding fostered innovation that might have otherwise gone untapped? <clears throat> Thank you very much, Senator, for this question. As I mentioned <clears throat> in my testimonial, uh, the program has changed Maine considerably. We were one of the first uh, states where the IDEA program was started in 2003. And over the years, I've mentioned this, we have trained 
3,000 students uh, we have retained and uh, first hired uh, faculty. Now, we have to do more. We are training, but now we are training the workforce. We have talked a lot about clinical studies. So the next step is now also translational research. I think what's very important is an initiative we are thinking about and we want to start about clinical study centers throughout the state. At the moment, we have only few clinical centers, but there is an untapped possibility of Mainers participating in these studies, which helps the overall health, public health, which helps making diagnosis. So the IDEA program should grow. And the IDEA program, besides what we are already doing, <coughs> educating the younger generation and hopefully not losing a whole generation uh, of uh, talented young people. We should work on translational research and we should associate our efforts with what's happening in the biomedical and biotech industry in the state. Great. Thank you for your answer. I'm out of time. Again, thank you all for participating.